Yeah, no, shut up. Okay, fine. Jameson, are you okay? Was the lie you weebs. How the hell are ya? I know I know. Y'all got them sweet ash primes for free recently and now you want daddy Jizo to show you how to not be an ash hole. Well don't worry you punks. I got you. Ash, one of the original OGs of Warframe. Arguably the most ninja of all the space ninjas, is definitely a solid Warframe you should be happy to have or look forward to get. Ash is the type that can be played in a number of ways including, chill mode stealth boy mode and full bankai mode. In the right hands, Ash can be an unkillable devastating force on any team. So let's get to it. First noteworthy thing you need to know is his passive ability. Hemorrhoid. Ahem excuse me I mean hemorrhage. All bleed procs deal 25% more damage than usual and they last twice as long. This effect goes for melee and firearms wielded by Ninja Gaiden Boy. That alone might not seem like much but allow me to briefly explain why this is crazy. You all have a few weapons right now that deal a little thing called slash damage. Contrary to common belief, slash damage is actually garbage against armored units like the Grenier but therefore pretty good against anything else. Bleed however, which is the status effect resulting from slash damage, does not give two shits about armor and will therefore kill Grenier as well. Bleed status effects are damage over time effects. Which means, the longer something bleeds, the more damage it will take. So thanks to Ash, all your inflicted bleed procs will be more effective for a longer time. You're welcome. Now then, let's have a look at his first ability. Ninja Star Pew Pew. Ash throws two ninja stars that will home in on targets within range. This ability could potentially be counted to one of the best in the game. It is cheap as hell to cast. Can be modified to deal way more damage and, since it has a 100% bleed proc chance, you can stack multiple instances of bleed on a single target. Causing insane amounts of damage. Now although bleed procs do not care about armor, you may choose to use the Augment Seeking Shuriken anyway. This will effectively strip armor from the enemies altogether. Thus making them way more susceptible to any other damage sources. Like your puny guns for example. I demonstrated how much of a difference that can make in my how to strip armor video in case you give a crap. This ability is highly effective and you should use it to either kill or at the very least soften up enemies from a distance before you engage them head on. Pretty simple. So let's move on. Smoke screen. This will make your sissy booty invisible for a short time and stagger nearby fools. Since there is not much to say about being invisible, let me just remind you of the invisibility mechanics. First of all you will gain melee stealth damage. Secondly you will always want to move away from your last position where you casted smoke screen because enemies will blind the attack that location. Which mean that you could accidentally get killed by a lucky shot if you stay in one place. Also, being invisible does not make your weapons silent. Enemies will blindly attack wherever they hear your gunfire coming from. So always stay on the move when invisible. Furthermore, although the stagger on enemies when casting smoke screen does not last very long, you can still use it to take some heat off of any situation and buy yourself or your teammates valuable moments to react to. Like for example during a reviver when you get cornered. Next up. Teleportation Jutsu. When aiming at a target, Ash will instantly teleport to the target and open it up to a finisher. You will need fairly fast fingers to pull this off effectively. 
but I can tell you right now that I would highly recommend using the augmentation fatal teleport. Not only will this execute the finisher automatically and thus, make your life easier, but it will also deal more finisher damage. So essentially you will be one-shotting pretty much everything in the game. When enemies get too tough to one-shot with this attack, you can always soften them up with the shuriken I mentioned earlier. This will make for a devastating combination and grant you the power to kill anything that Warframe throws at you. Not only enemies can be targeted but also pretty much anything with a health bar. So crates, excavation drills, pods and so on. The more creative you are with this ability, the more interesting combos you can pull off. For example you could teleport to an excavation drill that is being overwhelmed and then quickly cast smoke screen to stun all nearby enemies and thus stop all incoming damage. There are a number of other ways to combine these abilities so don't be shy to play around. If you use Ash a lot, you may find that the kill teleport will occasionally not work but that the enemy will stagger instead. Do not worry about it because during this time the enemy will take stealth damage. So essentially, either way the enemy is a goner. Next ability. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Arguably, one of the coolest abilities in the entire game, Ash will spawn up the two Shadow Clone assassins that will go out and kill everything marked. But before we get into that, let's look at the basics to avoid confusing the noobs. Upon casting 4, Ash will go into Predator mode. Doing so will cost you no energy at all and you can stay in this mode for as long as you want. Swiping over an enemy while in predator mode will mark the enemy one time. By recasting 4, you will spawn your assassins and they will attack the marked enemy. You can mark an enemy up to 3 times which will result in the enemy getting stabbed 3 times. If you mark enemies while you are invisible, no matter why you may be invisible, the cost of each marking is reduced by half. So see to it that you are invisible when you plan to use Blade Storm. Now then, you cannot increase the damage of Blade Storm by adding additional damage mods to your melee of choice. However, you very much can influence the attack speed. Which is important because faster killing means more damage per second. On top of that, Bladestorm will take combo counters into account when dealing damage. But I will get to that in a hot minute. While your stinking clones are doing the dirty work for you, you may choose to join the fun by casting teleport on any enemy whether they were previously marked or not. There are a few reasons why you will want to do this. 1. You will be the third clone to attack alongside the two existing ones which means you will effectively execute all marks faster. 2. Your soft shell S is completely invincible to any and all damage while in the animation. 3. If your sentinel sucks, it will actually pick up all loot dropped by enemies near your teleport locations. Now then, let's talk about ramping up the damage. As mentioned earlier, you can increase your blade storm damage output only with the combo counter. So what the hell is a combo counter? You might ask. Well you see, as you smack a mofo upside the head, a thing called combo counter will count the hits you are dealing. After dealing 15 consecutive hits for example, you will trigger a so called combo multiplier. After 15 hits the multiplier will multiply your melee damage times 2. With 135 consecutive hits you will trigger a times 3 multiplier. All of this extra damage will flow into Blade Storm as well. And since Blade Storm deals through damage, you might want to consider taking advantage of mods that increase combo durations such as body count. Now I could go into way more detail but that is a different topic for a different video. If you want me to spoon feed how combo damage and counters work, just let me know. One more piece of advice on the subject though. The Venka Prime has a secret ability that will benefit Ash nicely. Venka Prime is the only weapon in game that will deal extra combo damage. Which means that in the hands of an Ash, it will help Bladestorm deal more damage than any other weapon in the game. Alrighty then. Here is my build. As you can see, this is fairly cheap to pull off. Naturally you can replace all the primed mods for their regular counterparts. I use Steel Charge for more melee damage and 2 augments for this discount in Ruto. 
since you will be spending a fair amount of time invisible to cash in on that cheaper energy cost and bonus stealth damage, there really is no need for much survivability. Naturally you can change this up to whatever you like but I can tell you that if played correctly, this build is more than enough to take you very deep into endgame. So there you have it. All you need to know to be a god level Ash player. Feel free to let me know what weapon or warframe you want me to do next. Now like and subscribe to this shitty channel. And fuck off.